when I first came to Cardigan, the school was on the street, on Canaan Street. And Nauman had come there in I mean, 1951 when uh, he first graduated from college. And I was teaching in Massachusetts. We were engaged that year. So I did come up to visit a couple of times. And a couple of the boys have told me in later years how they used to watch us walk hand in hand down to the lake, wondering, oh yeah, I wonder what's going to happen. And so my first impression of Cardigan was down on the street at the old lodge and walking down to that waterfront. When we came back from graduate school in 1956, by then Brewster had been built and Hinman had been built and the classrooms were in Clark Morgan and the dining room <clears throat> was only the section of what uh, became Haywood Hall. It was a flat roofed building. And, um, you know, it was very exciting to see the progress because uh, when we were on the street those first years, Naaman used to bring the kids up to the Clark Morgan building and play haunted house in that building because it was a little spooky. So it was a whole different, it was a whole different ball game. There was a funny old carriage house out by the, where the chapel is now. And uh, <clears throat> actually I have a, a uh, wagon seat that I saved out of that old building. Yes, because that was something I firmly believed in, and although there was a reading program in place, how that fit into the whole business of how we, or they, as students learn, and how we learn, uh, was something that I was very um, adamant about. Well, because I uh, so firmly believed in what I was doing, and both um, my graduate work at Columbia Teachers College as well as my graduate work at Boston University, um, I knew what the research said and what how it should help kids at this age level. And um, so both the English department and the history department were terrifically helpful in when I wanted to integrate research papers into their curriculum and cooperate. And then, of course, Carol Shelton was just a jewel. Well, the important piece was the fact that I was able to get a company to print our particular schedule into a plan book. And that made it very easy for a student to document what he received for assignments and what he was expected to do the next day. And I would train them to look at night at what they had expected for the next day because every day wasn't the same. It was a different schedule of classes. That evening, look at what your schedule says for the next day and do those assignments. Then if you have time left over, go on to the next day. But for them to organize their time at the age level that they were at was extremely important. If you give them this plan book, they then want to put it in the day they got it and not the day they, it's due. And I used to say to them, okay, if you call up the doctor uh, on Monday and he gives you an appointment for Friday, if you write it down on Monday, are you going to remember it on Friday to look at it? And so that was always something that was hard for me to convince the students to do. Every once in a while, I'd have one that was really reluctant, and I would bribe them with some cookies. Okay, if you do it my way for a week, I'll pet make you some cookies. <laughs> and it worked every time. <laughs> well, it's, it's just something that I probably picked up at Teachers College Columbia and that I felt so strongly about, because I think it's just as you say, you need to see the whole, you need to survey it. You need to look at the whole question that you're attempting to solve. And then you need to think about some questions that you're going to answer by doing that. And then you need to read it, and you need to write about it, and you need to recite it. So by doing all of that, you're implanting all, both of, all of your learning styles, both visual and auditory, because I was very strong on trying to teach them whether they were a visual learner or an auditory learner. I'm not an auditory learner. I have to see things. 
And, you know, I could give them my example of, of the fact that this is the way I am. It doesn't mean that you're that way, but I'm that way. And you're, you need to understand your learning style in order to be able to uh, achieve. You know, I'm, as I say, I'm passionate about teaching kids how they learn. And that's something that I've done for years and years. And they, every once in a while, somebody will come back at me and say, you taught me that, that I had to do things. And so therefore, that, that's made me successful. But, and of course, that makes the old heart beat a little faster. Oh, I couldn't be happier. Absolutely terrific.